What is extremely rare but people think it's very common? A woman's water breaking during pregnancy. It only happens outside of the hospital like 15% of the time, but in the movies it's always the dramatic telling of when a baby is coming. Wow, I did not know this. When my boy was born they had to manually break the waters. That was like 6 hours after getting to the hospital. And about 20 hours after the first mild contractions. Edit, clarification on the husband in this scenario. Manually break the waters. Makes it sound like some grade A, Old Testament, Moses stuff there's a Red Sea joke in there somewhere, probably edit, I hear they basically stick a crochet needle up there from like 30 dozen of you. Successfully resuscitating someone who has drowned. Edit for clarification, drowned is the key word. I mean died from submersion in water. Utafog has opened a great discussion with me on this and this chart is very telling on the different success rates based on drown versus drowning. Edit, at request, health.harvard.edu if your heart stops there is a 1 in 20 chance you will survive with CPR. An AD doubles your chances. But that's only to 1 in 10. 90 to 95% of hearts that stop do not restart. The movies tell me all I have to do is scream at them to wake up and it works. Don't forget to pound on their chest. Don't you die on me you son of a bitch. If you're dead, I swear I'm gonna kill you. If the BBC has taught me anything, it would be murders in small British villages. My mom watched a show about two gardeners, Rosemary and Time, who traveled about gardening and going to flower shows and there was always a murder they solved. And they'd always know more than the police. Bitch, if two gardeners keep showing up around murders, they're the prime suspects. Shark attacks. I live in Perth, supposedly one of the shark attack capitals of the world. Sure, we see them occasionally. But actual attacks are very rare. I live in the other Perth and shark attacks are even rarer. Hashtag which other Perth? There are nine places named Perth in America. There are two places named Perth in Canada. There are two places named Perth in Australia. There is one place named Perth in South Africa. There is one place named Perth in Jamaica. There is one place named Perth in Guyana. There is one place named Perth in United Kingdom. I live 40 or so miles from the UK one, and it no longer looks like a word. Yeah the UK one is nothing more than a large train station really. Not many shark attacks. But when they do happen they're quite nasty ones. Scottish sharks will kneecap you for a sausage roll. People giving away drugs to kids at Halloween why would they give away product they could sell? My 12-year-old daughter told me that literally none of the kids in her grade will eat from the pizza place right by our house because the people making the pizza put weed in it. I figure 12 is old enough to learn that nobody is giving away weed. That shit ain't free. Where's this pizza place I should most certainly avoid because of the weed in the pizza? Based on movies, I'd say architects. Every professional worker in movies is an architect who goes to work every day with rolled up drawings hoping they're ready for the big presentation that will make or break their career. Big dicks. At work right now so I'm not googling the stats, but if you've ever had the pleasure of perusing through the Craigslist personals, you should, it's gold, there are a ton of women wanting a guy with at least a 9 schlong. 9 must be larger than 90% of porn stars. That's your bottom limit? You have no idea how rare a dick over nine long is. Two former co-workers, women, once claimed that they believe eight inches was the average dick size. They are setting themselves up for a life of disappointment. It's okay, all the average guys are gonna call themselves eight inches to them anyway. That's a fun joke I can't really do in text form. Why are women so bad at parking? Because men having been telling them this, hold hands fairly close together, is eight inches. Reminds me of my driving instructor. Learning how to park I totally misjudged my distance to a parking car and he told me just because you tell your girlfriend that this, hold hands close together, is 30 centimeters every night doesn't mean that the distance to that car is 1 meter. There are only 13 advertising blimps in use around the world, yet it's so common to see them when there's a football game. Edit, for those asking for a source, n.m.wikipedia.org under use. There's also a blog post by one of the companies that owns a lot of these blimps, Van Wagner Airship, that says so. 
Is there more than one good year blimp? BC I've seen that thing several times through my life, all throughout the country. I believe Goodyear operates too. The Goodyear blimp once almost crashed into our deer camp. We never even found out what it was doing there, the place is 20 miles from even the nearest highway, 50 miles from the nearest major city in Pennsylvania. My grandparents and I were sitting in the kitchen eating lunch, and the whole camp started to shake. We go outside, not knowing what it was, and the goddamn Goodyear blimp is floating 30 feet above the cabin. It hovered there for a good minute, picked up altitude, and went on its way. One of the damnedest things I've ever seen. You are about to be abducted by the Goodyear aliens. Becoming a successful YouTuber. Being in an airplane crash, it's one in a million but a lot of people I know are still more scared to travel on a plane than in a car. Australian here. Know a guy so petrified of flying he elected to drive from the northernmost point of Australia to the southernmost point, then drive his car onto a boat which shipped them to Tasmania, then all the way back again. All told this was about a 10,000 kilometers trip, they had other stops up the east coast. I'm not an expert but I figure weighing up the 10,000 kilometers through outback Australia combined with major city CBDs on the way to the destination and the risk of death or serious injury I can only imagine would be much, much higher than just flying for a few hours. While I'd say death of boredom is greatly increased as well, I used to make the trip from Victoria to Queensland by car every year and going through country NSW has to be the most boring thing I have ever done. True story, met a bloke in Darwin once, was his life dream to ride his motorcycle through central Australia from south to north to back again. Poor cunt made it to Darwin then paid somebody to ship his bike back down south while he bought a plane ticket. Said it was the most boring trip of his life and he couldn't stand to do it twice. Always feel for those people spending four figures on tickets on the gone. Never seen scrub before? You almost never see two guys walking across the street carrying a big pane of glass. I was on a college visit once and I saw two guys walking holding a big pane of glass. I took a good look because I know it will never happen again. I once slipped on a banana peel. I took a moment to really absorb it because I couldn't believe it had actually just happened. I had an old roommate try to explain that you couldn't really slip on a banana peel, it would just mush. So he proceeded to demonstrate by stepping on a banana peel and his leg went flying out from under him causing him to fall in the most hilarious way possible. Having green eyes. Only 1-2% to of humans on earth have green eyes. Been in Turkey many years ago, never seen so many people with black as the night hair and green emerald eyes. Burglary in the middle of the night. Burglary happens most often during the day, when nobody is home. No burglar wants to break in and try to sneak around your place while you're sleeping. His biggest concern is to evade detection. It makes more sense to work in the daytime. In all likelihood, that noise you heard outside was a car or raccoon or your imagination. Go to sleep. Edit, gold? Thanks but I was gonna break in and steal all your gold anyway. That's exactly what a burglar would say, don't trust this person. Quicksand. Using stop drop and roll. Exactly. But when you were in grade school, the amount of times that you had a fire safety demonstration that brought this up, you'd think catching on fire was like a normal thing. If only that idiot with the skateboard who soaked his pants in gasoline and then lit them on fire hadn't missed those 25 separate demonstrations in grade school. Pleading insanity to escape punishment for a crime. There was even a pretty so-so movie about it a while ago. In reality, it is very rare that insanity is used as a criminal defense strategy fewer than 1% of criminal cases in the US involve the insanity defense. Here's a PDF source for your perusal if you're not the type to trust some guy on the internet. Even then, it is only successful in 1 out of 4 attempts, and that involves convincing a psychiatrist that you're insane, so don't hang your hat on it if you're thinking about killing someone. Also, pleasing insanity doesn't get you off scot-free. It means you get placed in a psychiatric facility for an indefinite amount of time, until your DRS are satisfied that you are able to manage your condition without harming yourself or others. For many people, that could mean they never get out. For others, it means only a couple of years of therapy and finding the right medication. And most are released under conditions, such as remaining in outpatient care, living with a caregiver, etc. Ada, yes. It's supposed to be scot-free. 
When not guilty is a life sentence it's long so here's a podcast version if you are found to be guilty of murder and sane, you could spend 25 years in prison. But if you are found not guilty by reason of insanity, you could be confined to an institution for 587 years. Involuntary confinement in a state psychiatric hospital sometimes becomes a life sentence. I don't know, man, living for 587 years seems kind of appealing.